We loved our father. And we loved wrestling. I was six years old when High School Musical was released back in January of 2006. I still remember seeing advertisements for it between episodes of The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Now as a six year old, I wasn't overly concerned about the nuances of quality acting. I wasn't overly concerned about anything really, except maybe cinnamon pop tarts and Oreos. The music stuck in my head for a while, especially the beat at the beginning of Get Your Head in the Game, which is still awesome to be honest. But before I stepped into the theater to watch The Iron Claw, I had not seen him in a movie since Charlie St. Cloud, which was released in 2010, and it's not exactly a classic. Never in a million years did I think that Troy Bolton could lead my favorite movie of any year and deliver my favorite performance of the year in the same movie, but I guess there's a certain probability of anything happening. Now 2023 will be remembered mostly for Oppenheimer and Barbie. Barbie made the most money, Oppenheimer won the most awards. And there were some other memorable movies alongside those two. Minus One was amazing, Across the Spider-Verse met its extremely high expectations, The Zone of Interest was powerful, but no movie had more of an effect on me than Sean Durkin's The Iron Claw. I was mostly unfamiliar with the story of the Von Erichs going into the movie, and a little research I did beforehand made me think that the story ahead of me was going to be incredibly bleak, similar to another wrestling tragedy film, Foxcatcher. The only other Sean Durkin movie I'd seen was Marthy May Mar Martha Mace Marcy Martha Marcy May Marlene. Decent movie, terrible title. So my expectation was a mix of Foxcatcher and Martha Marcy May Marlene, but that is not the Iron Claw. Sean Durkin's latest film is, on the one hand, a study of why a single family suffered so much tragedy. In fact, so much tragedy that Sean Durkin actually had to tone it down. Chris Von Erich, the youngest son of Fritz, also killed himself following the death of Mike, but is left absent from the film. If the story was only about why David, Mike, and Carrie died, it could be pretty good, the same way Foxcatcher is pretty good. But the reason why it's my favorite movie of 2023 is because it explores something else, the survival of Kevin Von Erich. To understand why Kevin survives, we need to understand the emotional dynamics of the Von Erich family, which are fascinating. The family is built on the unshakable pillar that is Fritz Von Erich, and the opening of the Iron Claw establishes the way he views the world and how he'll teach his children to view the world. In the ring, he's a showman. He wants to entertain the crowd like nobody else. His performances are a massive emotional release. But when the bell rings, this is what we get. Quiet, solemn. There's a lot on his mind, namely that he's struggling to support his family, but he won't confess his insecurities to anyone. He must keep to the Von Erich rules, be the toughest, strongest, most successful, and rely on nobody but yourself and your family. These are the Ten Commandments that he imposes on all of his children. What's so impressive about the Iron Claw is that this patriarch could have gone too far. Fritz has a destructive impact on his family, no question, but does he love his sons? Absolutely. And that's not an easy balance to strike. If you go too far one way, the tragedy isn't believable. Too far in the other and you can't understand their allegiance to him. But the writing of Durkin and performance of Holt McCallany makes it work. So the boys do as their father commands, and they're as close-knit as it gets because of it. I love the scenes where the brothers are just eating burgers in a truck or floating down the river with a beer or just messing with each other. It's so good. These small moments show how much they enjoy being around one another. Too many movies expect the audience to be emotionally involved whenever the stakes are death. Infamously in The Rise of Skywalker, every Star Destroyer in the third act is able to annihilate a planet. So we should be rooting hard against them because thousands of planets could explode. But we don't know the people on those planets, so fire away. To feel the weight of loss, you need to care for who's on screen. You need to relate to them. And that happens very quickly in the Iron Claw because of brief but very familiar moments. However, even though the brothers would do anything for each other, 
they're bound within the familial structure built by their father. Tough love, which is useful at times, probably underused nowadays, is the only solution for the Von Eriks. This becomes a massive problem. But unlike his brothers, Kevin finds a lifeline. Oh, don't you want to ask me who to make it out to? Oh, yeah. Sure. It's Pam. Pam. Mm -hmm. Pam's introduction to Kevin is one of my favorite scenes of the movie. It's the model opposites attract relationship, and the actors have phenomenal chemistry. But their first date is also superb for a more significant reason. Kevin tells Pam about the death of his older brother, Jack Jr., and he tries to brush it off. He tells her that he doesn't really think about it anymore, it was so far in the past. But Pam sees through this, and she gives him a hug which is sort of played for comedy, but then you realize this is probably the first hug he's ever received out of empathy. It's a massive moment, and the camera lingers on it for a long time to make this point. The Von Erichs only hug when times are good, like when Carrie comes home or one of the boys is given a shot at the title. But when tragedy strikes, it's a different story. The father's rules come into effect. No hiding, no tears. Even Doris can't cry for the death of her son. The Iron Claw shows us that the rules that help the boys achieve success are the same ones that make it unsustainable. So we get the classic rise and fall arc. The more success David and Carrie accumulate, the more impulsive they become, Carrie especially. Kevin probably would have been the same way without his wife, but his dedication to her maintains stability. Now once David dies because of his refusal to get medical treatment, a domino effect begins. His brothers loved him more than anything, and they're asked to move on like their pet goldfish just turned over. Someone's gotta take his place and win the belt. That's what matters. Kevin has Pam, who at least offers him an outlet for emotional release, but the other two have no one. The Von Erich story has a Shakespearean feel to it at times, and there's a line from Macbeth that I think explains their situation very well. Macduff learns that his whole family has been killed by the king, and Malcolm tells him, Dispute it like a man. Go to war, get revenge. Macduff responds by saying, I shall do so, but I must also feel it as a man. Mourning and acknowledging loss is important, essential really. But because the father does not share Macduff's wisdom, the family unravels completely. David just remains in the background of their minds and debilitates them emotionally. And because they run away from David's gravestone, there is no glory when the belt finally comes home. This scene between Kevin and Carrie is so good. This is it. This is what every day of their lives has been for. But they're covered in darkness. Shadow bears down on both of them. That is how they truly feel. No piece of leather and metal can change that. As the dominoes continue to fall, the family's response remains the same. This single shot during Mike's funeral says it all. Another brother is gone, and Kevin's eyes are dry, to the disbelief of his wife. Kevin's next strategy is to not only retreat emotionally, but physically. He locks himself in the gym to avoid spreading the Von Erich pathogen to Pam and his child. In this sequence, where Kevin goes end to end bouncing off the ropes, is incredible. It captures his mood perfectly. He's alone, he feels trapped, the joy of wrestling left with his brothers. It's just a job now, and he doesn't know where to go. But thankfully, Kevin finds redemption in failure. His dad gets in the title shots, and he loses control. He goes off script, gets DQ'd, and instead of a belt, he gets judgment from his father and brother. But it's through this missed opportunity that Kevin realizes that he doesn't really care. What really matters to him, he already has. And on top of that realization, he finally sees his father for who he is. Notice how Fritz is the only one in the mirror in this frame. He's the type of father who will not be in your corner when you're down. His energy goes to winners, in this case, Carrie. Now, if there is a divisive part of the Iron Claw, apart from the Ric Flair actor who apparently does a pretty bad impression, I have no idea, it would be the river scene with all the brothers. It can't come off as too emotionally heavy-handed, but I did appreciate it more during my second viewing. Sean Durkin leans into the mythic here. Carrie leaves a coin that his father once flipped as payment for crossing the River Styx, and it makes you think. 
What if it's tails and not heads? Success can destroy and failure can redeem. I love how this scene makes you consider that. The film concludes with Kevin and Pam living on the ranch they dreamed about during their first date. And among the peace and prosperity, Kevin finally starts to feel like a man. The worst aspects of the Von Erich rules have faded, and he'll raise his kids to live a different way. So a movie that could have very easily choked on the enormity of its own tragedy does something unique. It offers hope. Because Pam is right at the beginning of the movie. There are no curses. We're all subject to the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, but there are no black spots. If we accept the suffering of loss and disappointment and have the courage to move forward as Kevin does, there are still pages to be written. You could argue the most important scene of the movie is when Kevin returns to his wife and child, because it's an amazing act of vulnerability, but it's the only one that can lead him out of the abyss. There are countless lessons to take from each major character in the Iron Claw, discussing them all would probably match the runtime of the movie itself, but the story is ultimately defined by Kevin's survival and redemption in the wake of tragedy. And it's Kevin's story that made The Iron Claw my favorite movie of 2023. All right, guys, those are my thoughts on the film. Feel free to leave yours in the comment section. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe on your way out. Have a fantastic rest of your day. I will talk to you soon.